So Monday, September 29th, uh, I'm uh, where I last left you. We were talking about Friday the 26th and and of September 2008, the the day Wachovia had gotten down and was in in the course of one minute there was Citigroup and the next minute there was Wells Fargo and the details of that played out over that weekend. And a couple of days before that, Washington Mutual had gone down and and you know throughout that whole month of September the drama taking place with the Great Wall Street iconic firms and the carnage of Lehman Brothers, AIG, Merrill Lynch, etc. Well, uh, so at this point in in the financial crisis, the um, policymakers had decided they needed to go to Congress, and 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 President Bush had said to Bernanke, to Chairman Bernanke at the Fed, and to Secretary Paulson at Treasury, "You guys do what you need to do, but you got to get permission from Congress. We can't authorize this on executive branch level." And and um, they decided they needed to somehow get some relief to the balance sheets of those financial firms to allow the sort of mechanisms of the financial firms to keep flowing and, and to restore liquidity and confidence in, in the financial uh, market. So they developed something that, of course, now we call TARP. And at the time, you have to understand, they presented it. I have a little copy of the single sheet of paper. This is not a 700-page deal. A single sheet of paper that kind of that kind of summarized what it was this bill or legislation was supposed to do. And it included um, buying assets that were deeply troubled and toxic and, and having to be marked down to very low levels off of that balance sheet from those companies so that they would have better debt to asset and debt to equity ratios, be able to lend, be able to um, meet their own uh, lending and collateral requirements with their counterparties and just allow kind of a restoration of health in the financial markets. And, and that was sort of the way it was presented. And there was kind of a footnote that said an alternative way we might do this would be to inject equity directly into them, give money to the banks in exchange for a, a preferred stock position. Uh, well, uh, they were asking for $700 billion. It was a back of napkin calculation as to what they figured the aggregate capital hole was across America's financial system. Um, they didn't think it was on the low end, um, but they were also pretty confident it wasn't obscenely uh, on the high end either. But th what they really didn't want to do is go ask for two hundred billion or three hundred billion if they were going to need six hundred or eight hundred or whatever the number. So they felt that seven hundred got them to the right place because they knew, and they were right by the way. If they had asked for taxpayer money and gotten it, and then came back six months later and said we didn't ask for nearly enough, then all hell would have broken loose. So $700 billion was a pretty aggressive number. Well, on this Monday, September 29th, I had met with a client that morning for breakfast. Uh, I don't know I don't know if I had slept more than three hours, literally, in a night in over two or three weeks. And markets have completely tanked and, and everything that is going on. At this point, you know, there isn't like this feeling of, oh my gosh, what just happened? Because it was still happening. So there, there wasn't time yet, there, at least for me. Emotionally, I wasn't going, this has been brutal. It was, this is brutal. The tense was not past tense. It was present tense, right? And, and of course, the client, my clients are feeling it. And this particular client I had breakfast with at the Lowe's Regency at um, uh, 61st Street and Park Avenue. And I remember distinctly the both of us just sitting there poking at our breakfast, not eating a bite, not, not touching our food just from the, the nerves and the anxiety of everything going on. And, and I had another meeting that morning, and markets get ready to open, and this is the day the House is going to vote on TARP. The Congress is going to vote on this TARP legislation. And um, I uh, meet another client at lunchtime at Morell's, which is this little outdoor cafe outside of Rockefeller Plaza, and we sat down and the market dropped 100 and we ordered an appetizer and I didn't touch that either. And it dropped another 100. And we just end up sitting there watching the market go down kind of 200 points per half hour, two hour, whatever it was, as they started believing that the House may not have the votes. And sure enough, they did not. And the TARP legislation failed that day and the market closed down 777 points. Well, if you remember, in February 2018, um, there was a day we had dropped, I think, 900 points. And just a couple of weeks ago here in 2018, meaning 
October of 2018, the market dropped over 800 points in a day. But that, that, the, both those numbers were done off of like a 25,000 Dow. At this point, we were dropping 777 points off of like a 9,000 Dow. So it wasn't, you know, two, three, four percent. It was six, seven, eight, nine percent in a day. Not Black Monday, not Black Friday, you know, uh, 23 percent and 18 percent in a day from the Depression and that famous day in October of 87. But I'm but but this was brutal. It was the worst day the market had, had that day that year and one of the worst days in market history. And so that stock market had collapsed dramatically. Now, in fairness, I have to tell the rest of the story. Market rallied quite a bit the next day on word that they, the Senate had approved it and that they were going to resubmit it to the House. And I think a lot of congressional, uh, both Republicans and Democrats, kind of chickened out on their no vote. It was seeing what was happening in financial markets. They sort of said, OK, it, the political damage to us is going to be worse if we let this stuff fall in the abyss. So they ended up voting for TARP. And, and that and I have so much I could say about that. I've done an entire podcast in the past about TARP at Advice and Insights, uh, if you ever want to look that up. What I think TARP did for the markets and rec economic recovery and what it didn't do. Uh, but my point is that you you on this given day, TARP failed markets tanked and and we remained in this complete oblivion and at some point um after they passed tarp it and then so markets rallied back right no then you had the worst week that we had through all of this from i think it was october 6th to october 10th they passed the tarp on the friday and then the market just dropped 500 points and the next day 500 the next day 600 and that's where we had gone from Dow 10,000 to Dow 8,000. Then we decided to come to Dow 7,000, dropping literally a couple thousand points in a quarter. And that's what September, October represented. Um, unable to find a bottom, unable to find the security and feeling of stability financial markets desperately needed. Uh, TARP sure didn't bring that stability to the stock market. It, it may have uh, created a baseline and how bad the capital position of America's financial companies could get. Um, but at that point in time, um, and this would be a few months before this changed, uh, the financial crisis was still spiraling uh, on Main Street and on Wall Street. And I, I wrote in the little article I wrote about this, I, I can remember that meeting being done and had a money manager I was supposed to meet with that night and he canceled. And I just sort of walked around Midtown by myself a bit that night. I don't get to do that in New York very much because I'm always running meeting to meeting. You know, it's a very high energy place and I'm a high energy guy when I'm there. But I walked into Ben Benson's at, uh, at 52nd Street and 7th Avenue, which is right by where uh, Lehman Brothers was. And and there's a steakhouse. It was, it was really good, and it, but it was really famous and and I just sat there by myself and, and ordered a little food. I didn't eat much. But um, I, I'm not making this up. I can remember just legitimately wondering, like, that's weird. The, the company that's closest to the steakhouse is right around the corner. has gone bankrupt. Had something like 20,000 employees, which, are, you know, thousands of which were right there in that building at 745 7th Avenue. I wonder how these, this place is going to do. And... Uh, Oh, it wasn't a year later, but it was just a little over a year later, um, early 2010, Ben Benson's was gone. And and you had the steakhouse that had been there like 30 years, and they went away. So it wasn't known like right there at that very minute in time, but the financial crisis was uh, decimating Wall Street, and it was decimating Main Street and having a rabid impact uh, across our our country's relationship with government, our company, our country's relationship with the financial institutions, and our company, our country's ability to do commerce. Period, affecting everything from steakhouses to Wall Street firms, and and that was the period that we lived through ten years ago.